So let's recall what an SN1 reaction is. An SN1 reaction is a two-step reaction in which the first step is known as the ionization step. It's the slow rate determining step. In this step, we have a substrate. Let's suppose for this case, we have a tertiary substrate that dissociates into the following two products. So this pair of electrons break off this bond and go on to our leaving and forming an anion as well as a cation, our carbocation intermediate. Now when we spoke about the SN1 reaction, we said that the second step is the product determining step in which our nucleophile uses its pair of electrons to form a bond with this empty 2p orbital, with this carbon. In other words, recall that a nucleophile is a good competitor of, or a good nucleophile is a good competitor of an empty 2p orbital. Now, so once again, in the second step, if the nucleophile is a good nucleophile, as we saw in the SN1 reaction, it will readily undergo the typical SN1 reaction that will produce your typical SN1 product. Now, what we never mentioned is the following. Things aren't really that simple in the real world. And that's because this can also act as a base. In other words, we never compared the nucleophilicity of the nucleophile with its basicity. Is it a better nucleophile than a, than a base? Or is it a better base than a nucleophile? Recall that a base is a molecule that competes for the 1s orbital, for an empty 1s orbital, whereas a nucleophile competes for the empty 1p orbital. So they're related, but a base is not a nucleophile. So, let's suppose now, on the other hand, our nucleophile is a poor nucleophile, but our nucleophile is a good base. So it's a better base than it is a nucleophile. Now what will happen? Well, now it will undergo something known as a unimolecular elimination reaction, also known as the E1 reaction. In this reaction, what is eliminated is an 1s ion, an empty 1s orbital, because remember, a good base is a molecule that competes for an empty 1s orbital. So this lone pair of electrons can take away this 1s uh, orbital, leaving this pair of electrons. And now this pair of electrons will attack this empty 2p orbital forming the following double bond, so an alkene product. So once again, if the nucleophile is a better nucleophile than it is a base, we have our typical SN1 reaction. But if our basicity is higher than its nucleophilicity, that means it's a better base, so it will take the empty 1s orbital forming our alkene product. So, now let's examine the stability of the alkene. So notice in this case, we had a symmetrical carbocation. We had a central carbon attached to three identical CH3 groups. And each of these H atoms are identical in the sense that it doesn't matter which H atom this base takes off, we will produce the same exact product. So that means that there is no preference but let's suppose we have an asymmetrical carbocation in which we have identical H atoms on this side, but we have a completely different group on this side. What can happen now? Well, now the base can take away two different H atoms. It can take away the H atom here, forming the following product, or it can take one of the H atoms on either of these two carbons, forming this product. Now, this is the more stable product than this. This is less stable. Why? Why are more substituted alkenes more stable? So notice that this is more substituted because it has more alkyl groups versus this. This has less alkyl groups and more H groups. So in order to answer this question, we have to remember what sp hybridization is. Remember, the more s character we have in our bond, the more stable that bond. The less s character, the more p character we have, the less stable our bond is. So more s, more stable, less s, more p, less stable. So let's examine all the bonds in this more stable product. So here we have one, two, three, four sp3 hybridized carbons 
and one, two SP2 hybridized carbons. So we're going to have one, two, three, four SP3, SP2 hybridized bonds and one SP2, SP2 hybridized bonds. If we examine this less stable product, we have one, two, three SP3 hybridized. Well, actually we have one, two, three, four SP3 hybridized and one, two SP2 hybridized. And now we have we still have our one sp2 sp2 hybridized bond as we have here but now we have one two only two sp3 sp2 hybridized bonds and now we have two sp3 sp3 hybridized bonds so one two sp3 sp3 hybridized bonds and only one to sp3 sp2 so notice we have this less stable sp3 sp3 uh, interact that we don't have here so we have less s character here than in the more substituted structure and so because we have more s character here when electrons are found in the s character they're more stable so that's why this is more stable but there's also a very subtle point that we need to discuss and it is the following. There is a statistical preference to form the less substituted alkene. So let's see exactly what that means. Let's look at the following molecule. So this is our carbocation that has a positive charge here. And let's use orange because we use red here. So here's our positive carbon. So notice that there are six green H atoms that can lead to the less substituted alkene and only one red H atom that can lead to the more substituted alkene. In other words, if our base takes away this H atom, we will form our more stable, more substituted alkene. And if we take one of these six H atoms away, we will form the less stable, less substituted alkene. So, there is a 6 to 1 ratio preference, probability preference, that the less stable product will form. So once again, what that basically means is that our base is 6 times more likely to take away a green H atom than a red H atom simply because there are more green atoms than our red atoms. But even with this preference, if we have enough energy, the more stable product forms because of this S character stability. This is so much more stable than this, that this is more preferred than this, even, even though we have a six to one probability preference ratio for the less stable product. So what can we conclude? Once the carbocation is formed, SN1 and E1 reactions will compete. They will compete with one another a good nucleophile will lead to the SN1 product. The SN1 reaction will take place, while a good base and a poor nucleophile will lead to the alkene product. We will undergo an elimination reaction.